These days, most of us carry around with us one of these. It's a pocket computer that allows us to communicate with almost anybody, almost anywhere in the world. And most of them come with at least two cameras built in. And that does beg the question, do we even need a separate camera anymore? And that prompted me to send this challenge to my mate and fellow YouTube photographer, Julian Baird. Hi, Julian. I'm currently at Oldswater. I'm just out having a little look around. There's not an awful lot of light going on tonight. So I'm just taking a few snaps with my mobile phone here. And that got me thinking, you're pretty well known for shooting with a Nikon D850. In some people's eyes, the best DSLR that money can buy. But you and I both know that it's not the camera that takes the photograph, it's the photographer. And I reckon if you went out with just your mobile phone, you could still come back with a really, really good image. So what do you think, mate? You up for a bit of a challenge? And Julian sent me this in reply. Hi, Chris. What a fantastic challenge you've set up for me there. Um, of course, I accept, naturally. I don't want to be the only one doing the work here, so I will be asking you to do the same and we can share each other's results at the end. You're right, you know, we both use digital SLRs. We're quite lucky to have such powerful cameras at our disposal, but you're right. It's all about the eye of the photographer and also, you know, a certain amount of luck with the light um, and, and the weather, but composition also plays a key part. So. We, we've got certain elements in our control, but I don't think the camera really in this instance should be the limiting factor. So it will be really interesting to see how we both got on out taking pictures with our mobile phones. Your challenge also comes at a really interesting time for me because I have literally just bought a brand new phone. Now, I didn't actually buy this phone for its camera capabilities. I mean, I've got enough cameras as it is, um, but it is a modern phone, so it should be capable of producing good results from the camera that's in there. So um, I'm quite excited actually to be taking my new phone out to capture some landscape images. So um, let's share each other's results and we'll see how we go on. Good luck. And that's why I was up at three o'clock this morning to come out to take photographs using my telephone. I must be mad. I'm also getting eaten alive by midges. Now I might be out taking photos with my mobile phone, but I'm not mucking about. I've come to my absolute favourite location in the Lake District, the beach at Glen Coyne on Oldswater. And we've had some beautiful colour in the sky already this morning. So fingers crossed, I should come away with at least one decent shot. This is the phone that I've been using this morning. It's a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which I've had for about seven months. And it might be a phone, but that doesn't mean that it's simple. So let's start with some of the basic specifications of this phone. The rear-facing camera has a 12 megapixel sensor, but I'm shooting in 16 by 9 orientation, so that's giving me about 9 megapixels. It's also got a fixed focal length of about 26 millimeters and a fixed aperture of about f1.7. Now the composition that I'm going for is using these rocks as a lead-in line. And this front rock is what? One and a half metres away from the camera? Yet I still know it's in focus because that camera has focus peaking and my DSLR doesn't have that. This phone has a couple of other really nice features that are going to help me get the perfect shot this morning. The first one is something called Pro Mode, which gives me semi-manual control, allowing me to set the ISO, which is set to 50 this morning, and the shutter speed to get the perfect exposure. And when in Pro Mode, this thing shoots in RAW.
It's now about half past five, so I'm going to head home and download the images off of this and have a little look at them on the computer and see if they're any good or not. That was filmed about four days ago. I'm now back in my office. I've uploaded the files to my computer and I'm now going to have a look and see what they look like. This is the image that I've chosen. It's the one where I've managed to capture the most amount of color in the sky and in the water. If we look at the histogram, it's reasonably well exposed. I would have liked it to be a little bit more over to the right hand side, but because there was no live view histogram, I had to guess, and I don't think I've judged it too badly. If we now look up here at the shadows on the right hand side, we can see that that's quite noisy. Uh, actually, that's very noisy. That's a bit disappointing, really. And if we jump over here to the right-hand side, and if anything, that's even worse. Um, it's, it's very noisy indeed, um, and it's very, very soft. There's almost no definition in the hillside or in the trees. What if we jump down here to the foreground? Now, that looks better. Um, that's reasonably sharp. Um, and I remember at the time that the uh, focus peaking was showing that the most of the near foreground was, was in focus. Again, like the rest of the image, it's very noisy indeed. If we jump over here to this area of colour in the water, that looks pretty good, that looks pretty smooth. Um, so that doesn't look too bad. I'm now going to edit this image and I'm just going to step through the normal adjustments that would make to any landscape photo. This is the finished image and all that I've done is walk through my usual post-processing workflow. So I've tuned the exposure, I've lifted the shadows, I've boosted the contrast and I've added a vignette around the edge. And I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with the image, certainly from a distance. But when we jump here into the shadows on the top right hand corner, we can see that we've now got this strange banding, um, which doesn't look very good at all. And it's still very noisy, I've done nothing to correct that. If we jump over here to the left hand side, it's very, very soft still. In fact, it's probably even worse. And now we've got this terrible pink fringing around the edge of the hills. Then if we drop down here to this area of color in the water, we can see that that's now gone very, very blotchy indeed. And I think it's clear to anyone that this file really hasn't stood up to post-processing at all well. So for what it's worth, Here's that finished image. I'll be honest, I'm very surprised at the quality of that image. I was expecting the Samsung to do a lot better than that. I'm now going to send that image to Julian and he's going to print it off and compare it with an image that he's taken using his phone. And all I can say is, I hope he doesn't waste his good paper. I'm now going to have a look at Julian's image and see if he's suffered from the same problems as I've had. This is Julian's image. It's of a rock formation known as the Bowman or the Bowman's Nose, I think. And as you'd expect from an image from Julian, it's beautifully composed. It's got a lovely strong main subject. There's some great foreground interest and he's even managed to get a bit of color in the sky. Uh, I believe it was taken on a phone called the OnePlus 6, which I know absolutely nothing about. But let's jump in and have a look at the image itself. So if we zoom in on the Bowman itself, you can see that there is a quite a lot of detail there in the rocks, which I think is very good for the phone. If you now look at the foreground, yeah, okay, I think that it's lacking a bit of definition in the ferns, but when you look at the shadow areas, it certainly isn't experiencing the same level of noise as I was getting from the Samsung. And then again, if we look at the horizon, yeah, these trees here, again, lack a little bit of definition, but there's certainly none of that awful fringing that I got after I finished post-processing my image. And all in all, I actually think that it's done quite well for a phone. 
So there you have it, landscape photography using a mobile phone. And in summary, I have to say, I was very surprised at the poor quality of results we were able to get from our phones, particularly my Samsung, which I was expecting to do much better than that. I really don't get the point of a phone that shoots in RAW when that RAW file is so noisy, particularly ISO 50, and it stands up so poorly to post-processing. I don't think Canon or Nikon have anything to worry about, and the quality of cameras in phones is gonna to have to improve significantly before they can be used for landscape photography. Thanks ever so much for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next week.